Hey guys, it's Tyler here reporting for Coaster Kids at Canada's Wonderland. We're here with Logan and Callie. It is around 8.20 a.m. and we are going to get a behind the scenes tour of Yukon Striker and Behemoth. So we gotta get going, so let's start going. So we're here with Alex and Graham from Canada's Wonderland. Alex is an engineer and Graham is the ride maintenance manager. And so can you tell us a little bit of the differences in your jobs? Sure, I can go first. Uh, I'm a heavy equipment mechanic. My background is in uh, the mining industry. I learned how to fix heavy equipment um, before I came to Wonderland. I came to Wonderland as a rides maintenance technician and uh, it, even though maintenance is similar, bearings are bearings, uh, the industry is quite different from underground mobile maintenance, uh, moving rocks to moving people. So uh, I enjoyed uh, my transition. I started in uh, 1994. And uh, I've held various positions here, rides maintenance technician, uh, foreman, uh, shop supervisor, and now rides maintenance manager. And uh, there's a lot of responsibility. Um, I take direction from engineers that design things and uh, make maintenance manuals. Yeah. So the maintenance people follow the manual and uh, you know, grease the grease keeps the, the wheels in motion kind of thing. Yeah. Okay, Alex, can you tell us something about your role? From, from my perspective, I take a great um, uh, respect of, of what uh, our technicians do, um, rely on feedback information from them because they are on the ride every day, all the time. And so that's, that's where I get my information from. And we start from, from the rides, manufacturers, uh, paperwork, documents, drawings, manuals. Uh, we design a comprehensive uh, inspection um, for, for each of our rides. Uh, they are all related to, to the guest safety. Um, each of our rides is inspected daily by a, a, a group of uh, experienced and capable me mechanics that do that uh, in order to make sure that we is safe. So it, it's really a, a teamwork uh, in the entire park. And um, uh, we take our guest safety as a priority. Um, we, we also take good care of guest fun, but you know, safety is always a priority. And uh, that's that's where we are. My background is uh, mechanical engineering. I am a mechanical engineer, or or, or uh, um, I was before I before I came here 24 years ago. And now I'm using my skills to um, maintain uh, amusement rides. Uh, there is also. In Ontario in, and in many other um, provinces and, and states in the United States, uh, there is a, um, because of, of the um, a lot of people going on these rides, there is, there is a lot of uh, uh, safety involved and safety concern. And for that reason, uh, the, the, there is a high legality in, in Ontario involved with licensing amusement rides in order to be operated by the general public. And for that reason, there is there is the whole process of getting them licensed and inspected by the uh, province or state inspection agency, and then um, we we inspect them ourselves. So that's all in in one big uh, system of, of inspections and taking care of the rides. They are operated in a safe manner and still provide thrill to our guests. Wow, that's great! And do you guys know approximately how many rides you've had on it so far? When you plan? How many riders? No, like how many rides do you guys Personally, have? I've yeah. been on it eight times. Eight? eight. Uh, probably something like that. We, we, we start when when when, uh, uh, when the ride is new, just, just to check it and, and see how it is, and then we compare our impressions, and yeah. then, uh, we go from there. If it's safe enough, we get uh, marketing people to ride it, yeah. so, they, so they can describe it to our guests how it is. Uh, okay, we, awesome. We do encourage the maintenance guys to ride ride so they know how they feel what they sound like uh, inherent vibrations stuff like that so it's a good perk 
Yeah. Okay, well, we can go around the corner and we'll... Let's go uh, behind the scenes, something that you would not be able to see if you, if you didn't come early. And, uh, There's five sections of track. You'll see it protrudes out of the tunnel at each end. But that tunnel started out as a big ditch that we dug. And uh, in 2018, in March, Myself and five or six other guys from the park with some contractors had to install the, the sections of the track in that tunnel so that they could put a cement cap over it and finish the landscaping to turn it into an actual tunnel. So we've actually been working on this since the winter of uh, 2018. Okay, we're gonna go look at the uh, lift drive. There's a chain that uh, engages, the train engages onto a chain. The chain pulls the train to the top of the hill and then gravity takes over it. It overspeeds the hookup point and travels away from the chain. But for the drop, we also have a chain. It's the same theory in reverse. So the engagement hook called a chain dog for going uphill. They have the same type, it's reversed, and it engages into the drop chain and it allows the coaster to go over the drop and then the drive comes to a stop for three seconds. Um, and then the drive uh, sends the train down the drop. So, how big is the chain? Does anybody care about stuff like that? Yeah. How do we measure chains? Um, by lengths. Sure. The pitch, the pitch of the chain is the distance between the two links. Okay, the pins in the link. So this one is somewhat around 150 millimeters or six inch, six inch between the pins. It's a very big chain. So this is the lift drive. There's a an electric motor that drives a gear reduction uh, transmission. The transmission has a big sprocket like on your, your pedal bike and the chain and the chain is inside this box assembly all the way to the top there's a return wheel at the top so this drive is constantly making the chain go like this all day long gravity allows the train to leave the station it comes down around and the engineers have designed it so that the train's speed matches the speed of the chain and you get a nice engagement and the train settles in onto the chain with the, with the chain dog, and the chain pulls it to the top, and then it falls off the chain at the top. Is that All right. why all dive coasters have the uh, drop turn out of the station? Like to gain that speed or momentum it needs? Well, it, any coaster needs to match the speed of the chain. Okay. So the ones that I know about are the same as this. Cedar Point's the reverse, I, I believe. Our, ours turns right, theirs turns left, I, mm -hmm. I believe. Yes. And uh, it's all similar, but it's always designed to match the speed of the chain. Because if you don't, it's going to make a tremendous bang, like as it, but one's going faster than the other. If you be careful, we can walk just over here. What we're looking at is uh, the two blue pieces are the electric motor and the lift gear reducer transmission and then there's a little diesel engine here that will when we need to we can use it instead of the electric motor for whatever reason if the train is already on the lift and we need to get it over the top and we don't have power we have the diesel motor that uh, we can sub in so to speak this is the funicular it's a uh, it's a maintenance vehicle and uh, 
it can be used to evacuate, evacuate gas off the Primarily a maintenance vehicle. Uh, it beats climbing all the way up. The mechanics say that's the best thing that ever happened. Until you can see it's a little bit below, and you can see it in the top, it's enclosed, but you can see the, the pins uh, of the chain come closer to The top part goes up, and the bottom part of the chain is the return. The bottom is return, and the one in between is the going up. So the chain is a continuous loop, starts from the drive here, goes up to the top, reverse pocket, and then it comes back. So it's, it's continuously running. The engineers designed the ride. It is not part of the design of the ride to go backwards. All braking systems and things are forward of the train. So they have to design it so it cannot go backwards down the lift hill. So on this particular coaster, Yukon Striker, each train has 10 anti-rollback dogs that engage that rack on the track to eliminate backwards you only want it to go forward. So it's a huge safety item. Driven by a control system, which in, in loose terms can be described as a computer that runs the ride. The operator just press the button, but all the safety features and everything is in the control system. And you can see the little green boxes on, on each side of the, the anti-roll bag. These are so-called proximity switches. They are it's an electrical device, electronic device that senses the presence of metal. So when the train goes by, it sees it. It, it feels the presence of a train, contactless. So, so it comes very close to the frame of the train and sees it there. And that gives the information back to the control system that takes care of where each train is. There are three trains. So in order to make sure that they don't collide, they don't even come close to one another, the control system takes care of that. And each roller coaster works on a similar uh, principle and, and that we, we call that block system. So there are, each roller coaster track is divided in several blocks, nine, ten, whatever, and then each block of the on the track can be occupied by one one train. Control system wouldn't allow it. No matter what you do, control system shouldn't allow you to make the two trains come close to each other and collide. And that's all uh, obtained by, by these uh, proximity switches that give information back to the control system, letting it know where the trains are. And then for safety reasons, every single morning on every single roller coaster, these proximity switches are checked by our guys. And they are checked by uh, simply trying to fold the system. What they do is they go to this proximity switch with a piece of metal and and try to trick it and say, I'm the train, I'm here, although the train is somewhere else. And the system must generate an error message. If it doesn't, that means something is wrong. But most of the time, or all the time, the system will actually consider that to be a, a, a nonsense information and generate an error message and stop the further operation. So we have to reset it. And that's how we check all of these switches to make sure that they work properly. Raw air day on the top. That's that's a. Uh, this this is a bearing. It's, a, it's what they call a slurring. It's a large bearing. So the whole wheel assembly will turn. Okay, you can spin it right around. You can spin it here because there is no track. The, the, the train is on a on a tank or on a on a storage uh, track. So there is no track that guides the wheels. This is where the track would go, right? Through between the wheels. Take a look at, at how how design of this works to be safe. It's got two running wheels, these, these larger ones, two side wheels, and two upstop wheels on each wheel carrier. And each wheel carrier is opposed to the wheel carrier on the other side. So when there are two track pipes, this wheel carrier is actually hugged the track pipe. So the coaster cannot go anywhere but, but where the track guides it. And additional feature is this uh, grass pads here. They are meant as a safety feature. If the, if the wheel wheel, uh, running wheel breaks, the whole thing would fall, but it would not fall off the track. It would just fall for the distance between here and there, and it would, it would not allow guests to be unsafe. Yeah.
these these brake fins have to fit in a mag magnetic uh, eddy current brake. Uh, so the train has to maintain a certain distance from the track. So these pads here, these skids, would keep it so that this brake fin still goes inside the brake pump. How are the people held in the seat? It's locks, mechanical locks on Behemoth and Leviathan. You know that anti-rollback device? It has. It looks like teeth on Leviathan and Behemoth. They have eight little round racks and teeth that lock into the to the restraint, so it can close against you, and then it can't open. On Yukon Striker, it's hydraulic pistons, and they can they can retract and close, but the valving system doesn't allow them to open until uh, the control system in the station allows them to open. So they are gear, box, and hydraulic pistons. Thank you so much to Graham and Alex for the tour. We learned a lot of cool stuff, and as always, be, be brave, brave guys! guys.